In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. Let's see if, now that we've talked to Gary, Morel has anything to say. We'll be on our way soon. Thank you again for lending a hand. Did you know Gary was hiding the armor, Morel? Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks. But dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. I also still disagree with Kim. I think Measurehead was the worst racist, at least so far. Thanks. The man mutters in the distance. He doesn't dare say more. All right, I'll get going. See you guys later. You should get up to the whirling. I adjusted our clothing a fair bit and organized it over here. Oh, have we gone in this door? No, wasn't this door locked? I thought this door was locked. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I thought. Feel safe and warm in here, not like outside. Okay, look at all this stuff. Okay, let's talk to this little girl. Hello, mister. Hello, little Lily. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with frank curiosity. Oh, she's cute, look at that face. All right, here we go. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Where are your parents? My mom's outside, and I don't really know about my dad. She gives you a bright smile, like it's a good thing. Are the twins outside your brothers? Yes. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. Oh, she can't play outside? They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look... identical. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. What's that? Point at the stuffed bird hanging from the ceiling. This thing up here. It's a growl! You might be able to get on Garth's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Yes, but what's it for? I don't know. Can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure, just go and get it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Ooh, we got another skill point. It looks angry, huh? I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Sounds like our gloves. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide and seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. Oh, interesting. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. Right, we don't think she stole them. And where are the gloves now? I hid them. The twins were gonna take them. They're stupid. She lifts her stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as though searching for confirmation. You know what, Lily? I agree. Your brothers are stupid. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. All right. Awesome. I mean, not that we get to break her castle, but the gloves would be great to have. What's the thing you're holding? It's Lammy! He's my friend. So, like... Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet you, Lamby. Lamby usually doesn't like strangers. But you're also fuzzy, like Lamby. I'm fuzzy? That's nice. Thank you, Lily. Goodbye. Bye! Okay, let's get this bird. We'll take that. Oh, it's worth a ton. And see what this is. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. Bye, Lily. Bye, Lammy. Let's go find that sandcastle, which, yes, this is it right here, I assume. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sandcastle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. Catacomb network? Broken? The little castle? 
The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it sleep in such decrepitude. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Thanks. Reach into the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed. Collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. I like this little story that we've spun up here around the castle. And also, we got the gloves. Very nice. Congratulations. That's the gauntlet down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Yeah, we've got three of the four pieces. Okay, let's take a look at those. Fairweather T500 gloves. Plus two interfacing, strength in digits. Clenching and unclenching your fist has never been so fun. The tiny ceramic plates make a lovely clicking sound when your fingers move. The gloves are a bit sandy, but the grip is phenomenal. Our current gloves are plus one half light, which I like having, but let's put these on. Maybe we'll get a thought. I think we got a thought. Oh, no, we didn't. I don't know what that noise was then. Oh, you know what? I bet we unlocked something. That's what that noise was. We can use the interfacing, the plus two interfacing on the chain cutting thing that we kept booting before. So that's excellent. All right, let's finish the rest of the village here, the fishing village. There's a person and a bucket and, ooh, and a yellow thing. Let's go see what's in the yellow thing. What are these doing in the fish? What, there's something there. Oh, boots. Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots, plus one perception. I think our inventory is full. Oh, we got another row. So, oh good, there's not a limited inventory. That's great. Okay, let's talk to this lady. Hi, cape. officer. Lillian the net picker. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. A sword? Oh, look, she's got fishing lures as an earring. That's cool. Anything I can help you with? That depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicible. Illicible? Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. I have questions. The first is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Oh, well, aren't you persnickety? Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Nice sword. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Hold on, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. That's true. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> The truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. Oh, uh, not that you're judging. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Wow, you're really a positive person. Really got a, a great perspective, a happy outlook. That does not go for real men. It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. Shut up, physical instrument. Coach means the expression. Yeah, I know what physical instrument's talking about. All right, fine. Behold, point to the expression on our face. <laughs> it's as if she hasn't laughed in a while. Not bad. Do you like it? Sure. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. Well, can I borrow the sword? It'll go well with my shield. No, I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I use to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. Okay, all right, that's fair. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, 
I ended up marrying. Where's your husband now? Gone. He disappeared? Sounds like a missing persons case. It absolutely does not. <laughs> we are not going to look for him. Poor Kim. Poor Kim. No, no. There is nothing to find. He's dead. Lost to the waves. He died? Was he murdered? The lieutenant shakes his head again. <laughs> yeah. By himself. Oh. Inadvertently. He never respected the sea. Went out there drunk like a skunk and... Sure enough, one day, he didn't come back. Well, that's terrible. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. Sinewy muscles, huh? She really likes those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. Oh, I heard that. I don't like any of these responses, but I guess we'll go for... Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Wow, she is very matter of fact. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glances at the village where two little kids are playing with what looked like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. Fascinating. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another. Better. Drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Okay, well, so there's a heroic suggestion check here. She needs to go on a date with another drunk, badly. But we have minus six because we don't know a good spot yet. But we can explore the coast to find out, so we're going to leave that. It is a white check, but there's no reason to try a three percenter. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now, I'm tarring a little skiff. Oh, we saw that. What else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insul Indian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. You know, didn't Orel say to us that, that the insul Indian phasmid was potentially here because of the pollution in the water? That doesn't seem like it would be real good for the fish or the people eating the fish. Anyway, let's see what surprises she finds. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. Well, we're contemplating hitting on her. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. Interesting. What have you found in the sea? Wood, pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. A mine, holy crap. I hope the kids didn't find it. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Oh, glass is tear. We could recycle that. Also, I wouldn't mind some more drugs. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. I guess as a detective, we should ask about the bodies. I need to know about those human bodies. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. Very unattractive bunch. Well, that's true. Yeah, maybe stay clear of the things reminded her of the floater she used to be married to. Oh, yeah. Just saying. I guess so. So I take it that's your skiff? Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry. Assuming the sunny days continue. Yes, that's it, unless we're going to deal for this, which we're not. Oh, and also we get minus one because Kim's presence makes it awkward. So we need to come here when we're not with Kim and after we've explored the coast and found a good spot to take her on a date. Be seeing you. All right, anything new? I think we got everything. Okay, I'm just going to run around a little and see if there's anything we missed. This we already hit. We already talked to the lady. Can't sit on the bench. We've been through here. Been to all these guys. Okay, first let's check this swing set. Oh, there's some cash here. Wait, let's check the swing set. The swing is missing. No one's been here for a long time. Let's pick up this money because money. Oh, I thought. Let's take all. The wind is corralled by the four-story building around this yard. Oh. Interesting, okay.
Glory, says the graffito, to the ghosts of us. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. There's a bunch of stuff. Someone has left their music collection beneath the tarpaulin. Oh, really? Hey, the smallest church in St. Saints. Isn't that what we were listening to in our whirling and rags room? I wonder if that's a lamentation. Lament. Whatever. Buck 20. Nice, we're making a lot of money. Hey, where's the 100 bucks from Gary, by the way? He stiff us? Let's go check out Morel's trap. God, why are you guys walking so slowly? There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. All right, let's look around for the phasmid. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. You see slabs of concrete north. In the east, the city center hums to you. But no phasmid? The constant distant song. Louder on this part of the coast. Nearer somehow. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. All right, let's reach for the trap. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Okay. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. Let's say nothing and just put the trap down. We've had enough of Kim's negativity. You set the apparatus back on the ground among the reeds. I think that might be the fishing village. Handled. Oh, thought. A drop in temperature. An easy flow there, an empty street before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps, just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened, across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. Chemically sweetened smoke, like, uh, like vape pens, I guess. I'm really liking Shivers. We get so much cool information from Shivers. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, 18, 21. Four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. Doesn't really seem to answer the question. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. Oh, that's interesting. We intuited all of that between shivers and suggestion. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Wow, so none of these kids are being educated. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. Yeah, so they're, I think we heard this, they're squeezing out the entire fishing village. Okay, that's enough. Let's finish the thought. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. And on that rather odd digression by shivers and suggestion, we're going to call it. If you've made it this far, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, remember to have your pet spayed or neutered, but not both.